Good morning, how to paint like a pro groupies. Um, so good, well it's good morning for me, but for where you are, it's probably night time if you're in Canada or USA. On the other side of the world, as you can tell from my accent, I'm from Australia. And I'm Sharon, and I blog over at I Restore Stuff. So today we are going to be talking about milk paint, how to mix it, how to not be scared or intimidated by it. It really is a fun paint to use. And today I'm joined by my friend Julie Henderson, who's right here. Hello. And Julie's from Chalk and Trees, <laughs> also an Australian uh, Facebook page, and she loves to upcycle furniture. And you love milk paint too, right, Julie? It's my favourite. I know milk paint. Love yes. it. Okay, so Julie's going to be looking for your comments and your questions and things like that. And I'm sure that we're also joined by uh, Fiona, Tabelle, I'm um, hopefully Laurie Pringle uh, will pop on to you to say some things about milk paint because they are also experts in this field. So while I'm waiting for a few more people to join, why don't you tell me where you're tuning in from, where in the world you are, and I'd love to hear from you. And why don't you put in a yes if you've used milk paint before and a no if you've never used it before. And I'd love to see who's used it, who hasn't used it, um, to give us an idea of who we've got watching today. So, Julie, if you start to see those comments pop up, can you see the live yet? Yes, I can see the live. We've got a couple of people on there. Say hello, everyone, please. Yay, yes, Let us know you can hear us. Yep. So. And if you've used milk paint before, put a yes. If you haven't used it before, put a no in the comments. And let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm Sharon from Australia and I blog at Biorestore Stuff. We are starting off today our Milk Paint 101 class with just some plain pine boards that we're going to be using for our demo. Now, milk paint works absolutely a treat on raw timber because it soaks into the wood and the colour um, stains it. Um, so we're also going to be talking about stains today. We're going to be using milk paint as a stain. But first, let's do something fun, and I thought we'd mix up a colour. So I'm going to give you a choice, though. So we've got red, green, and blue. We've got boxwood, French enamel, Ooh. and tricycle red. What's your favourite out of those, Julie? I'm a green girl, so I'm going to say boxwood. You're going to say boxwood? Yeah. But I love all of them, actually. They're all beautiful colours. They are, aren't they? And as you'll notice, I'm using this mustard seeds milk paint today. Um, also made, uh, another place that makes milk paint, who's also the owner of, um, who makes this mustard seeds milk paint, is Homestead House Milk Paint. Uh, so if you've tried their milk paint before, yes, put a yes in the uh, comments. And if you've never tried milk paint before, put a no. Have we got any yeses or nos coming through yet that you can see comments? Not that I can see. Um, I can see we've got some people online, so make sure you're commenting, yeah. please, so we can we see. So um, maybe we just have to refresh the page. Well, I'm going to go for your option today, Julie, just because it sounds good. <laughs> uh, you will notice when you're using milk paint, some of the pigments will actually mix in a little bit different than other pigments. I know that red, some people take a little bit longer to mix that red in. We need to turn up the volume. We need to turn up the volume. Can everyone yep. hear? Or make sure your volume is turned up on your computer. That's another thing too. So make sure your volume or you've got um, your sound turned on at home. So mixing up milk paint, I just use, and I've just got an ordinary salsa jar here. You can use a mason jar. I've been using either, but I do like our friendly salsa jars because they're quite a wide amount and you can get a fair bit in there. Now when we're mixing up milk paint, we, with the powder, it comes in powdered form and milk paint is made up of five uh, natural ingredients. So, we need some scoops. We're using equal parts powder to water to mix up milk paint. So. We've got any comments coming through? Yep, the, I okay. think the sound is sorted. We've got the sound sorted. That's Thanks, awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, oops, I'm just going to put the water in first, actually. Let me see. Wait till Marty comes back and he can kind of zoom in on this a little bit. Love to know where you're tuning in from. So can you um, just go over what you've just said again? Yes, um, so because, so because our sound was 
uh, a bit low. Yeah. So we are mixing milk paint today. We're going to show you how to mix it as a stain. We're also going to show you how to mix it as a paint. And I was saying at the beginning that we're going to be just using these pine boards. They're raw, and so milk paint works wonderfully on raw timber because it soaks and penetrates into the wood grain uh, and get, gives you lovely, good coverage. So today we're going to be mixing using equal parts of the milk paint powder with our five all natural ingredients and equal parts water. So I'm just using these little scoops here. Because we're only painting a pine board, I don't really need a lot, so I'm just going to mix. Only for the fact I'm really not going to need this much. I'm going to do two scoops of water and two scoops of powder, but I am not going to need anywhere near that much. But when you're mixing it, it just helps to have a, have a little bit more than just a teaspoon or a tablespoon. These are just tablespoon measures. So we remember we put two scoops of water. Now we've got two scoops of powder. And the colour we are using right now is boxwood, which is a deep green like the boxwood tree. So there are a few ways that you can mix milk paint. You can see that the powder is a little bit separated from the water. I'm just going to give it a bit of a swirl there to show you. We've got some lumps in there. We're going to mix those out. One way you can mix it is by just popping your lid on and giving your jar a really good shake. But you may get some air bubbles in that method. So another way of mixing it is by just using a little wire whisk. You can use a, a paddle pop or a teaspoon or anything you like. You can use a wire whisk. Today I'm actually going to use my coffee frother. <laughs> but don't use it for coffee. And I'm just going to turn it on, but I'm going to hit the bottom of my jar so it doesn't splatter everywhere. And you're just giving it a little mix because you want the powder to thoroughly mix in with the water. So hopefully joining us online, Julie, I don't know if you've seen any names pop up. That Do we have Fiona DeBell? Fiona's here. Yay, She's just Fiona. posted your uh, link to your website. Oh, thank you. So yeah, I'm Sharon and I blog at I Restore Stuff. I'm from Australia. If you missed that, if you've just tuned in or you didn't hear me properly in the beginning, um, and Fiona and even Laurie, Laurie Pringle, expert on milk paint mixing. <laughs> if she's there, she's going to pop in with a few comments. If, if you have questions, please let us know. So in the beginning, I was asking if you've used milk paint before or not. And if you have used milk paint, put a little yes in the comments below. If you've never used milk paint before, put a no in the comments below. We'd love to know who's used milk paint and who has never tried it before. I'm just going to wash this out with a bit of water. Laurie Scott says no, she hasn't. She's never used Corinne, it before. Corinne, she hasn't. Debbie hasn't. Lots of people Lots of haven't. people have never used milk paint before. Oh, well, here we are out. to tell you how easy it is to just mix up that paint. So, if you can see, we've got a pouring cream consistency, I would call it. I'm just going to get my brush and show you. So there is a little bit of a thickness to it, and that's just mixed beautifully. So we've got a gorgeous boxwood green here. We get that pouring action in there. There you go. See, it's just a little bit like pouring cream. We're just going to put that on our piece of wood here. And we're doing it on raw wood this morning or this evening, depending where you're from. Tell us where you're tuning in from. I saw we had somebody from North Carolina, Brenda, I think. Oh, hi, Brenda from North Carolina. I have a sister-in-law who lives in North Carolina. Hopefully she'll tune in. Nice part <laughs> of the world. It is. Gorgeous. And if you missed it earlier, I'm joined by Julie Henderson from Chalk and Trees here in Australia. Julie's come to help me read your comments and answer your questions. And she's also a milk paint, a lover of milk paint, aren't oh, you, Julie? Favourite. Yes. Love it. Love using milk paint. So look how smoothly that's coming on. And that's just on raw wood. And I've got such good coverage just with that equal parts, equal parts powder to water. And that's just one coat. I haven't even done two coats yet. Now you'll notice we've still got occasionally the little lump that hasn't mixed through. People Remember have asked what brush natural. you're using there. I'm using an F30 Klingon brush. 
Klingon brushes are one of my favourites. Got people from the UK, Alabama. Hey, UK. Victoria. UK. Now, people from the UK, hats off to you because it's probably like <laughs> midnight or one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what are you guys doing still awake? Obviously, you really want to know about milk paint. Brenda's asked, does it get thinner as you go over it? Um, it, oh, I'm not sure what she really means by that, but it's a self-leveling, if that's any help. So um, you won't get brush strokes with milk paint. As you wipe it on, I'm not sure if you can see that. We ha do have a few little grains here. Um, but yeah, it dries quite quickly. Mm. What was the question again? Does, Does it, it get thinner as you go over it? It is a very thin paint, It is. It? It's quite a thin paint. It's not thick like your chalky type paints. Um, or fusion mineral paint, it's a bit different to that again. Uh, yeah, and if you need to, as some people have often asked the difference between milk paint, fusion paint, and chalk paint. So I've got a great blog, blog post on that. I forgot to give you the link, but maybe some Fiona or someone could find that link and um, pop that in there if you're really unsure. What's the difference between all those paints? I've got a great blog post that outlines all those differences for you. Mm. So we're just going to let that dry. It, it's even starting to dry a little bit on the corners there. And you can see a little bit of graininess, but some of the... Listen, can you hear the kookaburras? I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> so Australian. Australian. We are in Australia, people. There are kookaburras in the background just for you. I don't know and if you've heard about this. kangaroo will come in soon. Yes, and our kangaroo is uh, about to enter. Yeah, we're just feeding him <laughs> breakfast. That's it. <laughs> if you've never heard the kookaburras, you'll have to just Google that because um, we had friends staying here and they were freaked out because they heard them in the morning, the kookaburras laughing and thought they were... Screeching monkeys or something, I don't know, from the jungle. Yeah, someone said, are they birds? Yeah, they yeah. are. Kookaburra, Australian native bird. Starts with a K. And we timed them just for you. <laughs> I know, you are welcome. All right, so milk paint class. Um, how many people do we still have? Do we, is there anyone on there who has used milk paint before who've said yes? Yes, there are a few people <clears throat> that have used it before. That's awesome. Okay, next I'm going to show you how we can use milk paint as a stain. So we've got our board, we're just going to let that dry there. So to use a stain, I wonder if anyone has a guess how we can create a stain using milk paint. There's probably people that already know. I'm going to be using, as a stain, we've got a, a dark brown colour here, or typewriter. For the, for the um, layering technique that I want to show you today, we're going to have a dark base and a light top. And we're going to show you, so stay tuned, a two-toned two layered look. And we're going to be using hemp oil as a resist in between those two layers. Nice. So to do that, uh, I'm going to use, I'm just going to show you with typewriter. Typewriter's a charcoal -y kind of black colour. Great colour. Yep. Also works great for um, making, creating a chalkboard typewriter colour. So to use uh, as a stain, I'm just going to do one scoop, but this time we're going to use three parts water. So you could use two parts water, you could use four parts water, but just remember the more water you use, the thinner the stain is going to be, and you'll get a less of a stain, less dark. Is that what I'm trying to say, Julie? Yeah, Help less deep colour. Less deep colour. Yes. Have we got any questions yeah. so far? Uh, Laurie wants to know, can you store it once you've made it? Okay, so milk paint will be good once you've made it for about up to a week in the fridge. So that's the best place to use it. Um, oh, that's good advice because yeah. I didn't know you had to keep it in the fridge. Yeah, because it will go off because mm. it's a natural... It's like if you used your milk paint powder, you know, your milk paint powder that you actually mix up to make milk. Did I say milk paint powder? No, milk powder. Yes. <laughs> yes, that you'd have in your pantry to mix up to make milk. Um, you would have to put that in the fridge. It does go off over yes. time once you've made it up. But once, but in the bag form. So let me just show you the bags. Hang on a second. Here's my milk paint cupboard. Ta-da! Ta-da! So if you visit irisstorestuff.com, you'll be able to order yours if you're in Australia, of course, but find your nearest milk paint distributor by Googling mustardseedsmilkpaint.com. 
Um, so it comes in powdered form like this, two 30 gram bags, or you can even buy smaller sample sachets of 30 grams each to just give you an idea of color. In fact, one little sample sachet is enough to do, way. it does go a long way, it's enough to do probably a small table like the one that Julie's sitting on. You would be able to do, it's just a sample. And of course we have all the lovely waxes and things like that. So it does come in powdered form. We've put our three parts water and one part powder of typewriter colour into my trusty salsa jar and I'm mixing with my little whisk here. And it's quite watery because remember the other one was like pouring cream. <clears throat> this one is a little bit runnier because we're just making a stain. So we've got our plain pine board. If you wanted to make this even more rustic, you could ding it and bang it up and scratch it and all of that kind of thing to make it look rustic. I'm just going to use another brush here. Tamara's asked <coughs> if you can yep. paint it on and then wipe it off to show excess wood grain. Yes, you can. So you could even do that with your regular paint. You could wipe off excess. Mm. Um, I do find that it is a bit better to do it in layers though. So if you're trying to get a stain with the grain showing through, mm -hmm. um, you know how you, you can try something and then if you, if you want more, you add more, but it's easier to add more rather than take off. Definitely. So I'm gonna use my mixture of stain right here. Three parts water, one part milk paint powder. And this is black, remember, typewriter, so that's going to make a really fun stain. You can just leave it painted on or you can wipe off the excess. I'm looking to see if I have any rags to wipe it off. Do you want me to get you a chucks? Uh, yeah, or something. I think there was some rags on that trolley around there, sorry about that. Or, no, up on the top there, perfect. Thank you. So. So, uh, yeah, staining really nicely here. I'm going to go over the lot. It's actually soaking in nicely and I probably don't have to wipe off the excess. I might just try it with this side here. And just wiping back. So see how that wipes back to show the grain through. This would still soak in and probably show a little bit darker but just to make it all look even I'll wipe that back to show you that. And then yeah, you can really <laughs> see the difference. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. So you see how that's just created a lovely stain. So when milk paint dries it always does look a little chalky, a little porous. So don't be worried about that because you always use a top coat, either an oil or a wax or some kind of sealer to put on top of that. So when that does dry, it'll look so lovely with its wax and its new, its new clothes on. So if you were uh, not happy with the darkness of that color and you thought it might have needed a little more, I think it's looking a little darker on this side than it is this side. You can always add a little bit more once that milk paint has soaked in can add a bit more to that side. If you've just joined us, we're talking about milk paint and how fun and easy it is to use. Right now we're using it as a stain. I'm just going to wipe that back again, leave it a little minute. Well, not a minute, but you know, a millisecond <laughs> and wipe it back a little bit more. So you can always add more depth by layering some more stain on it. So we're going to let that one dry. Have we got any more questions about milk paint? Anything else we need to comment? We'll leave that here to dry. No, um, not as yeah. yet. <clears throat> so what happens right. if you get some lumps? Okay, so we've got a few little tiny lumps on here. Um, lumps just probably mean that the powder has not been totally saturated with the water. So sometimes I didn't with the boxwood, as you can see, I just mixed it and painted straight away. But it's good to let it go and sit just for a little bit longer, maybe two to three minutes and let that powder really get <coughs> saturated with the water. Um, so some, but these lumps and these little grains, when you sand back, they will sand really to a nice smooth 
finish. So it's all part of the lovely, it's kind of a rustic kind of looking paint, I think. And I love the variation that you'll sometimes get in the uh, colouring and in the pigments as they're all mm. um, you know, being painted onto your surface. If you leave your milk paint sit for a while, now this is another big pro tip, milk painters, you'll notice that the powder will start to settle to the bottom and the water will be sitting on the top. If that powder is settling on the bottom, um, it always will. So what I do, if I'm painting a large piece of furniture, I'll actually, every second or third time I put my brush in the jar, I'll put it in and swirl it around the bottom and then wipe off your brush and keep painting. So there's your tip, just swirl around as you're dipping about every second or third time that you put your brush into the paint to paint your piece of furniture. And that helps just the, the powder and everything, it stops the um, settling happening at the bottom. Um, any other good milk paint tips that you've learnt, please post them in the comments. I'd love to hear your top milk painting <coughs> tips. That would be wonderful. So I have a piece that I have painted earlier. This is a board that I painted with Curio. So this is the Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint brown colour. Sorry, it's this one here. It's just a chocolate brown colour, which is really great for getting that timber stained look. So as you can see, it's all dried and looking rather chalky, like I mentioned to you before. Uh, what we're going to do is now add our hemp oil on here to create a resisting layer and then we're going to paint on top with a white colour. So the white that I've chosen today is grain sack. It's just a slightly off-white, grey undertones kind of colour, just as you would imagine a grain sack. Oops. So using the mason jar again, and I'm going to start with, I was going to start with water, but my scoop is dirty. Let me get another one. Now the reason I'm actually mixing up my milk paint first before I do my hemp oil, hemp oil resist is because I really want the um, milk paint to go on straight after I've put on the hemp oil. Because I get you get some really great results and I'll show you how that works in just a minute. So, let's just do two parts for the sake of our mixing abilities. So remember when we're making milk paint, two parts water and two parts powder. Equal portions, it's just so easy to remember, so easy to mix and it goes on lovely and smooth. Get a little swill. This is the colour grain sack. Oop. And I'm just going to be using my milk frother. But we don't want too much froth in there, so what I'm doing is I'm tapping the frother on the bottom of the jar to stop it from aerating all at the top. Because then you just have to paint out those bubbles as they appear on the surface of your furniture. Laurie asked if you can froth it up to give it a different effect. You probably could. <coughs> it's a great idea. Experiment. Milk paint is such a fun thing to experiment mm -hmm. with. And if you have just any sample boards like these lying around, or just go to your hardware store and grab some offcuts and sample boards and just have fun playing with milk paint. You can mix it with all Do you know what I really can, like? Yeah. Is that you never know what's going to happen. I know. And, and so let's talk about that because when you're paint, painting, not on raw wood, but if you're painting on a piece of furniture, uh, it can be quite unpredictable. And maybe that's why some people are a little bit afraid to use milk paint. So if you're a control, a control freak. I am. Yeah. But you still are okay with it. You, you I kind am of now. know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you have to just know that you're not sure what's going to happen. That's and right. And just go with it. And you go with it. And it's a lot of fun and I think that's why I like it. And there are ways that you can, you know, if, if you get too much chippy, just go back, <coughs> sand a bit more and um, go again. But you will get times where <coughs> you start to learn the surfaces that you're painting on, don't you, Julie? In fact, mm. what we're going to be talking about... If you want to join me at 10 o'clock Australian time, and that'll be like 8 o'clock, I think, yes. US time, um, 
over on my iRestore stuff page, we are going to be, I'm just going to grab the hemp oil, we are going to be... It's up at the top. Go? Sorry, I moved it. <clears throat> going live over on my iRestore stuff page and talking about the different surfaces that we paint on and how to tell whether your painting, your piece ha has varnish or um, shellac or an oil or a wax on the surface before you actually go to paint it. So Julie and I, Julie's a bit of an expert in that area, so I've asked <laughs> her to come onto my page and join me in a live, so that's coming up right after this. Um, but right now, yes, we were talking about milk paint on different surfaces reacts differently. So you get to know the different surfaces that you're working on, um, but a good scuff sanding, that's all you need, and then slap on your milk paint and just wait and watch for that chippiness to happen. If you don't want that chippy or flaky look to happen, you can add bonding agent, which is uh, added to the milk paint already mixed up. So say I've got my boxwood milk paint here. Um, I add a little bit of bonding agent to that. The instructions are right there on the, uh, on the bottle. Um, you only need a little, a little bit and it will bond the milk paint to whatever surface that you're going to put it on. The cool thing about that is you don't have to put it on any subsequent layers. You just put it on that first coat mixed with the bonding agent and you've got it good to stick there and do the thing that you want it to do. If you want a nice smooth solid look with milk paint you can use the bonding agent to make that happen. So I do like the unpredictability about it though to get that lovely chippy look and you can get lovely distressing. Right, so we've mixed up our grain sack colour. That's ready to go. I've kind of let it sit there a little bit. Now I'm going to put on some hemp oil. I'm just going to be using this cloth to put it on. You could use a brush if you wanted to. And once we've got that on, I'm going to be painting sort of straight over the top and you'll get to see the hemp oil starting to resist that layer in between. So we could just drizzle, I think. There's our hemp oil going on. Now hemp oil is great for an actual... Whoops, I've put on way too much now. <laughs> hemp oil is good for a... A lot of things. Uh, as a finish, look how, if I just left that on, on this stain, look how lovely that's coming up. So even just as a stained wood piece. So I'm just going to randomly put the hemp oil on the top and we're going to watch where that ends up resisting as we put our paint on. So have you coated the whole lot? Or if you can see, I've just kind of patches? just randomly left some patches. But I want to get onto that hemp oil straight away before the hemp oil soaks right in to the wood grain. So I'm going to paint that now that I've got my hemp oil. And you don't want to rub the hemp oil in, okay? When I teach this in workshops, I just tell people, just lay it there on top. Don't push it into the surface. We want it kind of sitting there. So then we're going to go in a nice big even strokes across. Margaret wants to sack. know, can you paint on an oak floor? Ooh, on an oak floor. Paint on an oak floor with can milk you, paint. Yeah, can you use it as a floor finish? Well, I'd, maybe um, I'll get Fiona to weigh in on this or Laurie if she's there, Laurie Pringle. Uh, I've never painted milk paint on a floor before. I'm not sure how that would wear or how well that would wear. So. I Hopefully guess it really, these guys can you know, what a, that. it would depend on how you finished it. So if it yeah. had a durable finish over the top. Yeah, that's correct because milk paint's only going to be the underneath substrate. It's only going to be the first layer because you will definitely have to put on some kind of coating on the top that's going to make that floor, oak floor, really durable. Mm. Actually, I do think I have, I, d I have read blog posts where milk painters have painted floors um, right. Or even stained them, you know, with the curio. And I can't remember who that would be, but hopefully someone will find some links for us there. Okay, so that, we're going to let that dry. Hopefully it'll dry in time to show you the lovely result because that's what we want. <coughs> yeah, it's a bit cooler this morning, isn't it? It is. All right. Um, we might need a hairdryer or for Julie to run outside and put it in the sun. Would you mind doing that? No, of course not. Thank you. And while Julie's doing that, so there you can see it kind of looks like it might be resisting in little bits and areas, but if we pop that out in the sun, it should dry pretty quickly. Okay. You want me to yeah, go you this can way? Go that way out Excuse the hallway. <clears throat> might need a hand opening the door. Let me show you 
this uh, piece of timber here that I actually did a video, a YouTube video, so um, we might pop the link to that. Julie, when Julie comes back, I'll get her to do that. Um, the link to this video where I used this actual piece of wood to show you uh, milk paint resist that we're showing you now using two different colours. So you don't have to just do that method with a stain and a, color on, uh, um, and a white on top. You can do it using two different colours. So on this example that I'm giving you, we used um, blue as our underlayer. Come on through. <laughs> I'm just telling you about this one. So if you can pop that link to the YouTube video sure. down in the comments, that'd be great. Uh, so on this side, I've used hemp oil as a resist in between the blue layer of paint and the red coat on top. On this side here, I used a wax puck. Now, that's just a beeswax puck that you can, and I put it somewhere, here we go, that you can use on your surfaces to create a, a resist. You can even use wax if you like. So we just rubbed that on the high points so that when we sand back the red layer, it doesn't show through to the raw wood because as you can see here in this centre section, I didn't put any resist in between and when I went to sand back, I don't know if you can see that, you can see the, that it's worn right through to that blonde wood on the underneath side. So um, yeah, that's a little uh, a video that will show you in detail exactly what we're showing you today. <clears throat> so the hemp oil has resisted and we've got a lovely bubbly effect here once you sand back that top layer of paint, which we can show you once that's done its little drying thing there. All right, our green one, <coughs> excuse me, is drying nicely. You can see as it dries, it start, starts to look chalky and porous. Uh, and then, well, as we talked about before, it does, have a, whoop, it does have a few little lumps in there, which is the fun part about milk paint. And I'm going to give it a go. Let's see, our, our um, other stain, the typewriter stain, that's drying too. I might just have a little go at sanding with my sandy hands glove. Now I know you can't get these in the USA and Canada, but our Aussie people, we sell them here at Iris Store Stuff. Sanding glove with whatever grit you like to put on there. They're interchangeable They are grits. the best. I know, they're so good. Them. And you can get them in the UK. <clears throat> Sarah and Zoe are distributors over in UK and Europe for these gloves. So I'll just sand on the bit that I've dried. Really should wait until it's properly dry. I was not thinking ahead today, was I? But I'm just going to sand back on this little part here. And remember we only did one coat of the milk paint. So you can see there, creates a lovely smooth surface. But you do get lovely variation. When we were talking before about the milk paint separating, so you get a uh, sediment down the bottom and you put your brush in and swirl it around. If you do leave that sediment there, you'll actually get a variation at the very end of your milk paint job. So you'll do a whole piece of furniture and you get right to the bottom. If you haven't mixed in that paint continually as you're painting, you may get, say, boxwood may show some more yellowing. Or blue. Or, or blue. Yep. Or there might be something in uh, the pigments that will show a little variation. So just make sure you're mixing that through as you go each time. Unless you like that. Unless you like that look. You could. You know, I painted an outdoor table for my husband. Yes. And I deliberately didn't mix my milk paint properly oh, yeah. because I wanted those streaks of colour to yep. show through. Absolutely. So experiment. It's a lot of fun. So I'm not going to sand here where it's not quite dry, but I'm just showing you the end here. So you can see what a sanded piece looks like. <clears throat> and why don't we just use that hemp oil again to show you how we can finish milk painted pieces with hemp oil. So hemp oil will seal in your paint. And I'm just going to put this on the rag this time, a little bit on the cloth. I'm a recent uh, hemp oil convert. You're a hemp oil convert, are you? <laughs> It's beautiful it stuff. It is, isn't it? Look at that. Now, you're supposed to use a lint-free cloth. I can tell that there's lint coming off on this one, so I've chosen badly. But look at that. Gorgeous. 
You can also wet sand with hemp oil. Probably shouldn't use the same glove that I'm going to do this, but I'll just use one finger, okay? <laughs> um, you can actually wet sand with hemp oil, and that will help to also create lovely smoothness as you're going in. And it's a gorgeous finish. I'm actually removing some of that fluff at the same time. It really deepens the colour, doesn't it? It does. I'll just use this clean. Wipe off some excess. <clears throat> yeah, so that is your true colour. So don't go by the dry chalky finish, but look at the difference in that, how different that deeper colour is on the green than the porous chalky finish that you feel with milk paint once it's dried. So we might have a look at now this stain, which is pretty much almost dry, which we used typewriter colour. And <coughs> I was going to get some wax, Julie. Oh, here it is. Have you got a big enough pot? I know. Have I got a big <laughs> enough pot? See, us furniture people, we <laughs> tend to use a lot of wax. And I just love Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint products, waxes. Mm. Um, and Homestead House has the same wax. It's just gorgeous, uh, mixed with a bit of canorba. And um, it's a museum grade quality wax. It gives you a beautiful finish. Don't have my wax brush. That's okay. I'm just going to use a cloth. Let's find a clean spot. I will. Okay, so we're going to wax over the top of this one just to show you while we're waiting for our paint to dry. <clears throat> Maybe I'll just do one Hi, side. Hi, Sarah in the UK. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Lovely to have you. All right. So I'm just waxing that one side to show you a bit of a difference. We'll do one side. Now you always, well, I do anyway, wax with the grain. Do you wax with the grain, Julie? I just feel like always. I do everything with the grain. You sand with the grain, wax with the grain. So we are waxing, if you've just joined us, we're waxing a milk painted, actually milk paint stain of typewriter. So see how lovely that looks. So we haven't even buffed that yet. I've just placed the wax on. So notice I didn't use a lot on my cloth. I've just put the wax on. Just leave it a couple of minutes. Let's pretend we've left it a couple of minutes. <laughs> do as I say. Television. <laughs> I know, let's do as I say, not as I do. So I'm just going to wipe in, off any excess. And we can see a lovely waxed side. Can you imagine just doing the whole, your whole floors in that though? Except, you know, wax is probably not the most durable surface for floors, so you'd use something different. I need another cloth. Maybe, yeah, another one of these white ones is good. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, <clears throat> once that's sort of dried off, you can just, whoop, I'll just go back to this. You can buff that wax off. So buffing motion, people, some people just leave their wax like that. If you just left it like that, it does have a bit of a tacky, sticky surface. Actually, you can see my fingerprints as I put them there. You can actually see the fingerprints in the wax. So um, if you just leave it there, you're going to not get a nice sheen on your finish, but we're going to buff that. And this is how you buff. It's a forward and back sliding motion. And you sort of you're shining it. It's like shining your shoes in the old days. No one shines their shoes anymore. What's with that? No, Does anyone just do buy that? new shoes. <laughs> yes, it's a bit of a shame. Some people just buy new shoes. Who still shines their shoes? Okay. Kids, when their parents... Well, yeah, them. if they have to wear school shoes. See, in, a, in the USA, they don't have a lot of schools that have to wear uniforms. Oh. In Australia, um, our schools have uniforms, and some of them have quite strict uniform policies where we have to polish shoes, etc. Okay. Laurie has asked... Um, do you then poly after the, or is the hemp oil the last step? Okay, so if you're using hemp oil and you've let it soak right in for a few days, that's when you could poly over the top as a durable finish. If you're using wax, 
nothing will go over the top of wax. So wax is always <coughs> your very last and final step when you're doing any kind of painting or finishing. Um, because wax is going to resist that next layer that you try and put on the top of it. So if you have a wax layer and then you try to put hemp oil on top, the hemp oil is just going to sit there on top of the wax because the wax is your protective top layer. Uh, same with a poly, it's a water-based product and if you put that on top of a wax, it's just going to sit there on top of the wax. It's not going to do anything. Wax is always last. And wax is always last. Let's say it after me, people. Wax is always last. <laughs> Corinne would like to know what grit um, sandpaper what, did you I sand think that's with? a 320. Yes, 320 that one. <clears throat> All right, so if you can get a close-up of that one, that is the difference between having an unfinished milk painted stain. So you always put a finish on your milk paint stain. Look at the gorgeous grain coming through there on my little pine board. Um, beautiful finish there. I reckon we'll check if that's dry, Julie, yeah. if you don't mind. No See if problem. our... Whoop, I'm we're tangled. tangled. I'll go this way. Okay. <clears throat> so how are you going there, people? How are you enjoying the Milk Paint 101? Do you have any more questions? Um, is there anything that we haven't covered that you need to know? Because we are live here, you know, my brain just might forget it. So um, please ask below if there's anything that you need to know. And even if you are watching the replay of this, please pop your comments uh, below any questions you have because I'll go back afterwards and, and answer those um, or, or also ask some of our admin team, Fiona, um, Laurie, Hayley, uh, Sarah, Jenny Lynn, any of the other admin people um, to come in and help answer those questions. How's our... It's nice and dry. Yeah, see, look how beautiful our Australian sun just dried that lovely for us. Lucky, because I was relying on that this morning, wasn't I? <coughs> Okay, we are almost finished, people. So hang in there because you will want to see the finished result of this. Right, so remember, if you want to recap what we've done on this piece of wood, we created a stain using milk paint with three parts water, one part milk paint powder. Then we created a resistant layer so that it would resist some of this paint on top using hemp oil. So we just brushed on the hemp oil or wiped it on not rubbed it on, we didn't want to rub it into the, the wood surface, we just wiped it and lay it on. Uh, the next thing we did, we had our mixed up milk paint white layer and we've laid that on top. So hopefully what we'll see is, and we can see a little bit here where the, the hemp oil, I sort of didn't really brush on that surface, but I'm going to show you what happens then as we rub back and sand this we will start to see where the hemp oil has resisted the layer and it's not going to go right through to that blonde wood. It's going to actually show through these lovely grains. A couple of people have yep. asked, do you need to add more hemp oil later or more wax later? Yes, so you always finish off, because we've got that porous layer of the grain sack colour on top, you'll always... Um, need to add a final layer of a sealer. I think they kind of mean like once once you've done the hemp oil, yeah. will you have to go back a year later and... Oh, okay, so on any kind of surface? Yeah, so hemp oil you will uh, tend to need to reapply after about a year, especially... Yeah, so if here for example, on my workbench here, I know it's got lots of paint splatters and that kind of thing, originally... <laughs> I, my first thing I did was hemp oil this and it came up with a lovely finish. But over time it does really dry out um, and as you can see I've got a workbench here happening which is all cool because I think it looks funky. My husband does anyway, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so he likes it. Um, so yes, if I was going to do that again I'd have to reapply. Alright, so I hope you can see that but we have here a rustic, almost like a farmhouse style barn board look and I really love the way that that hemp oil has resisted and we can see all those gorgeous little flecks of brown. No, what do we put? Black. Brown underneath this one, black underneath the other one. I'm trying to remember now what we used. So typewriter was the one we used on my other board. This one we used Curio, the brown. So <clears throat> There you go. So there's a lovely, another kind of way to make that barn boardy 
look or finish. And I'm just going to finish that off now to seal it with, you could put wax on here or we could put hemp oil on. So I'm just going to finish that off with some hemp oil since we have that on our cloth already and because it's all sort of underneath there. As we put the hemp oil on, hopefully you'll even see more that um, dark will show through. <coughs> maybe I'll just sort of show you half, maybe that will work. Okay. So what does it, what does it look like, <coughs> hemp oil compared to wax? Let's do the other half wax. It really, um, it doesn't look a lot different to start with, but the hemp oil over a few days really soaks into the wood and you get more of a dry finish, mm -hmm. whereas the wax will have more of a sheen on it. So I'm just going to do that half with the hemp oil and I'll show you the wax with the other half. Where's my wax pot gone? Did I put it back? There we go. So we're just finishing off here with a little bit of wax on the other half. We really don't need a lot of wax, but we're just going to rub that in to the surface. Maybe a little bit more. The Miss Mustard seed waxes really are beautiful. They are. Don't smell at all. That's one thing I also love about milk paint, using any of these natural, no VOCs, no nasties, no nasty chemicals. You can actually wax inside your building and not have to worry about all those fumes and things. Very environmentally friendly. So we've got hemp oil up here. You can see if you look really closely, I'll just buff that quickly. The wax has more of a matte finish at the moment, but I can tell you now that in a couple of days, this hemp oil will all soak in. Are you trying to get that sheen there, my lovely cameraman husband? <clears throat> hearts for Marty, hey? Who wants to send Marty some hearts? Thank you so much, babe, you're doing a great job. Um, so we've got wax here, you can see a lovely sheen on there. The hemp oil sort of looks shiny, but it will soak in and create like a, just a nice matte type finish over the top. So there you go. So can you use a tinted wax? <clears throat> you can. You can tint your wax with all sorts of fun things. Uh, some of the metallic paints that Fusion has, that's a great mm. idea to tint your wax with. Um, we've got, you know, coloured paint you can mix in to make them. Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint products also comes uh, in a white wax and an antiquing wax. And uh, Homestead House has their espresso wax, a gorgeous coffee colour and black wax. So I love using any of those. In fact, I'll just show you my <coughs> my little sample. This is another YouTube video I did of showing four different <coughs> excuse me, four different finishes you can create using uh, Miss Mustard Seeds waxes or finishes, so hemp oil on one or the other. So here we've got the white wax. You can see that it sits in the grooves there. It gives you a gorgeous finish. Now this is typewriter, the colour typewriter red. And it even gives it a pink look once Tricycle. you've done the... Tricycle. Sorry, not try. Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. Tricycle, as in like a little red tricycle. Um, and this is the antiquing wax sitting in the grooves there. So you can see it creates another whole look. I'll just point this one out to you too. So here's milk paint that I've painted on two, same colour red, but this one I've painted on a dark surface and this one I've painted on raw wood. So have a look at the difference that that made with just one coat of tricycle, uh, one coat of tricycle on both of these pieces. So they have a different look depending on what surface you're actually painting them on. So look at the dark surface, we get a darker, but that's because you can slightly see through because I've only done one layer. So if you um, if you have a think about it, this. If you add more layers of tricycle on there, it's going to get closer and closer to the true red that you're looking for. It'll get closer to this colour. So it'll cover up more of the dark and this will cover up more of the light and they'll become that tricycle colour. Actually, this is tricycle as well. So you can see over that blue, we've got another sort of look happening there. Anyway, I sure hope you've learnt a lot today about milk paint in our Milk Paint 101 class. I'm sure there'll be other uh, lives that we'll do later on about milk paint. But thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Sharon from I Restore Stuff. And join me in a few minutes time over on my I Restore Stuff page where Julie will be
the expert on wood finishes and showing us how to tell what surface you're painting on or what surface you might want to refinish. You might want to not want to paint it, you might want to stain it again or sand it back and strip it back and oil it. So we're going to help you with those uh, techniques of how to, we're going to be play scientist. Aren't we, we? Are. That is going to be fun. We're going to have our goggles. Go get your goggles, girls. <laughs> You'll need them for this next class. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me on How to Paint Like a Pro. You've been awesome. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.